In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a free scan gauge. In other words, how to save a lot of money on your gas using the scan gauge tool. Most of you that have watched several of my videos know that I use this tool called the scan gauge. Well, one of the many features of the scan gauge and the one I like the most is that this gauge actually helps you save gas while you're driving. Now, well, the main way it helps you do that, it subliminally turns your driving and monitoring of your fuel consumption into a game. Like when I go here to my gauge setting, which is the X gauges, I can do, I can monitor all at one time my miles per gallon. That's current miles per gallon. My average miles per gallon on this trip that I'm on my total fuel cost for this trip and I can even go over here and monitor my gallons consumed per hour. So while I'm driving, all three of those will show a factor. Let me show you how that works. There's all my gauges in focus. Here I am, I've been sitting here for, I don't know, a minute or two. So far, I've burned up $3 worth of gas because when I go here, to my more and my fill up, I actually program in how much it costs me to pump gas. So as I'm going, this is what my, ga my gas costs per gallon. So as I'm driving along, it can calculate how much gas I'm actually using. So when I go to my X gauges and I'm looking at my display, I've been sitting here burning up uh, four cent worth of gas. One of the first thing I learned when using this gauge was when I first start my car in the morning and it's running rich because a cold car is programmed to run rich, my gallons per hour consumed was 0.54 or 0.52. When the car is warmed up, my gallons per hour consumption has dropped all the way down to 0.32. So Letting a cold idle, a cold car idle versus a warm car idle, a cold car will burn, you're talking 40% uh, more gas than a warm car will. Another thing I learned by monitoring gallons per hour is if I'm in gear, like right now I'm in park, I'm burning 0.33 gallons per hour. When I'm in drive, my gallons per hour jumps all the way to 0.46. So I'm burning 25 to 35% more gas when I'm sitting somewhere with my foot on the brake in drive versus when I'm sitting in neutral or in park. So if you're sitting somewhere idle and you don't mind shifting to neutral or park, go ahead and shift to neutral or park and you'll save gas. Now the gauge you see on the bottom right, which is the total fuel cost, that is the total fuel cost for the trip that I'm currently in. So as I'm driving from point A to point B to C to D to E, if I shut the car off and I don't leave the car off for longer than three minutes, that continues to climb throughout my travels. So if I'm driving from one state to the other, I pull off, I get gas, I get back in my car within three minutes, that keeps ticking. I stop, I grab a burger, get back in my car, that keeps ticking. If I go into a retail store like Walmart or something like that, that gauge will reset when I go in. Nonetheless, I can always go back to my trip setting and monitor what my car is done for today. So, so far today, I'm getting 21 miles to the gallon. And I've traveled 12.9 miles, and my total fuel cost is $2.21. So, that's two ways to monitor the total cost of fuel. Now, the one thing that I really wanted to show you was that that total cost of fuel gauge could be very effective in helping you save gas and money. An example was, I moved to a location that was kind of close to church. Typically, people always drove this one route to get from my location to our church. Well, 
I checked Google and found out there was two or three different ways that I could get there. So I traveled each way and I monitored that total fuel cost for each route. The route that was least likely to be traveled was actually the cheapest route. It cost me around 87 cents per trip to church and 87 back. Well, if I went the common way, it cost me about a dollar and 30 cent or something like that. It was about a 47 cent difference in gas just in one trip to the church. Well, when I calculated how many times a week I went to church, which was on an average of three, then I calculated the weeks in the year. Basically, going the route that I ended up selecting saved me $152 per year off of my gas bill. And I lived there for more than two years. So I saved $300 by using the route that this uh, scan gauge recommended that I go based on the total fuel cost for that trip. These were the three short routes. The blue was the Google recommended 4.5 miles. The purple variance is the people's choice, which was 5.6 miles. And then the green is the route I discovered using scan gauge, which was through small streets and through neighborhoods most of the way, which was 3.5. Uh, six miles. I really wasn't aware of the mileage difference. I just knew that the total cost to travel there was a lot cheaper going in through the neighborhood with the green route. Now, as you're driving and you're able to monitor your real-time miles per gallon, your average miles per gallon for this trip, your gallons per hour if you continue to travel at this rate and your total fuel cost subliminally your brain will make a game out of this and you'll try to do better when it comes to getting uh, mileage out of your car now the first time I had this gauge during that first year I calculated my miles per gallon that I was getting out of my car and before I bought the gauge I was getting around 21 miles to the gallon around the city and I was getting around 24 miles to the gallon on the highway. After three months of use, I noticed that I was now getting 24 and a half to 25 miles to the gallon around the city, and I was getting nearly 30, 29 to 30 miles to the gallon on the highway. So, during my first year of owning the scan gauge, I was able to save or get 20% better gas mileage. When I calculated my mileage and divided how much that saved me in a year, the first year my scan gauge actually saved me about $576. So, yeah, I not only got a free scan gauge, but it actually began to pay me for having it. So, purchasing and driving with one of these scan tools like the scan gauge can actually pay you year after year as you use it and let it help you fine tune your driving habits to save gas. Another way this tool helped me save gas was to monitor my engine temperature. If you know anything about running cars, if your engine runs cold, it uses more gas because the computer makes the car run rich. Well, when my thermostat started wearing out, my car quit getting up to, like you see, 188 degrees Fahrenheit, and it began running cold around 172 to 168. Well, that'll cost you gas money with your car not warming up properly. So, I changed my thermostat, and my miles per gallon continued to go up again. And another thing, when you're monitoring your miles per gallon through this tool, which is an easy way versus manually calculating every time you get gas, this tool will quickly let you know when something bad goes wrong in your motor. For instance, if your spark plugs all of a sudden start firing not as good, you'll lose gas mileage. If your wires or coil starts going bad, you'll lose gas mileage. And if your gas mileage goes from an average of 22 miles to the gallon 
all of a sudden you're getting 18 miles per the gallon, you know something is wrong and you need to get your car checked out and get it fixed. So this scan gauge will also help let you know when something is wrong with the tuning of your car. Last but not least, this scan gauge helps you find your sweet spot when you're cruising down the highway. An example is, if you're going down the highway and say you have an hour or two to travel. So, you're going down the highway, you can reset your miles per gallon and you can reset your average uh, mileage and stuff like that. So, I go to my trip. I go to today. I see my miles per gallon and I go on my current trip. I can reset this miles per gallon. So I reset this. I set my cruise on 70 miles an hour. I drive for 30 to 60 miles. Then I check to see what my miles per gallon is. I reset it again. I slow down to 65 miles an hour. I drive that way for uh, 30 to 60 miles. I see what my miles per gallon is. I reset it. I slow down to 60 miles an hour. Do the same thing. I speed up to 75 miles an hour. Do the same thing. If you're in an area where the legal speed limit is 80, you speed up to 80 miles an hour. Reset it. Do the same thing. And when you come and see what the variance is of your miles per gallon, you'll learn the sweet spot for your car's miles per gallon. So if you're driving down the road and you learn that at 65 miles an hour, you're getting 30 miles to the gallon, and at 70 miles an hour, you're getting 25 miles to the gallon, it'll behoove you to drive 65 miles an hour when time and speed is of no concern. A good example of that is, I used to live 18 miles from my office. If I drove 65 miles an hour, I would get there in 21 minutes. If I drove 70 miles an hour, I would get there in uh, like 18 or 19 minutes, two minutes faster. But in that extra five miles an hour, I would burn almost 20% more fuel. So it made sense to me to slow down that five miles an hour because I'm driving to my office twice a day. And that twice a day, is going to save me money just by slowing down five miles an hour and giving up those two minutes it takes me to travel uh, to my office. And that only not goes, that goes further than that. Anywhere I travel that's just a 10 or 15 uh, minute drive, driving 65 or 70 is not going to make a lot of difference in time. So I can slow down to driving 65 most of the time and save that money when I don't have to get there in a hurry. So, this video started out telling you how to save money and get a free scan gauge, but in, in reality, it actually pays to own a scan gauge. So, as soon as you can, get one today. I have another video called the Scan Gauge Review that's linked below that'll help you see the other benefits and features of the scan gauge. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.